Hi, I'm Caleb Hill, and this is my path towards data science. Just finished week number two. So excited to be uh, through our second week in, in this quest towards data science. Um, we started off this week by finishing the Google Python class um, that we had talked about last week. Uh, there was really one thing left to do, which was this final little project where we took a log file of uh, HTTP requests and we were able to grab um, particular files that were images and combine them together to create a, uh, a puzzle image that we put together in, a, uh, in an HTML file. And I'll show you some of the code and what that looked like. Um, so here we have the, the log file that we used regex to grab only particular uh, file names. And you'll see here's uh, some of the code that I wrote uh, to get this working properly, but we were looking for, uh, for these puzzle pieces and we had to, to look again for those specific titles. Um, and uh, we also had to get rid of the duplicates and everything and then piece it together uh, in this HTML uh, file, which ultimately ended up looking like this picture right here. One of the things that I'll have to note uh, about this, uh, and specifically this uh, Python class from Google, is that it is several years old. Um, I think this one was from like 2012. And so there were several functions and methods and things that were, were deprecated. Um, they've been deprecated and it did make going through this a little bit tricky because I'm running Python 3.9 and I think they're running some uh, Python 2 and maybe Python 3 had just come out uh, fairly recently. Um, and so there again, there were some tricks that I had to figure out um, one thing that I did really enjoy because of the deprecation uh, was being able to dive into documentation in order to, to accomplish these things, um, which I think is a, a critical thing. If you're going to learn how to be a programmer, you need to understand uh, how to read documentation and use it and apply it. And that being said, um, I did make a change in the middle of this last week. Uh, I switched from using PyCharm to using Atom as my IDE. Um, and the reason that I did that was I was finding, I was having to print everything in order to see what was going on inside of my code as I was working. And I wanted something that was a little bit more uh, flexible and, and able to display what exactly was going on, specifically as I was working with the Pandas library, which we'll dive into in just a minute. Um, I would, I wanted to be able to see what was inside of, uh, the, the pandas data frames and, uh, which are just tables and I couldn't do that as easily, uh, inside of PyCharm. So, uh, I got Atom and I installed, and I'll show you this, um, I installed this, uh, plugin or package to Atom called Hydrogen, which allows you to interactive uh, code and it uses a Jupyter kernel and I'm not super familiar with exactly how all of this works uh, together. I just followed a tutorial. I will share that tutorial that I followed um, in the description below. Uh, I just use this package to uh, interact with the code more and I will show you what that looks like. So actually we're going to dive right into pandas. Um, and if you've never heard of pandas before, um, pandas is a Python data analytics library. We're going to walk through just the, the basics of pandas, uh, from the video course that I took. Um, I'll share that actually with you guys as well. Um, so this, this is the, the again, the school that I've been following data school. Uh, they have several resources for data science. Um, these are a little bit old. They're, they're definitely newer than the Google 
Python class, uh, May, May 10th of 2016. Um, but he's got a 37 part video series where he walks through pandas. Um, and I think I made it to like video 24 or so this week or something like that. Um, but again, very good. I, I recommend it. It was a good starting place for me um, and really helped me to dive into pandas. And I'm just gonna walk through some of the stuff that I learned. Um, so here we have pandas, which we're gonna import into Python. Um, notice we have a little checkbox next to that. I just ran that line of code one line at a time, um, which this is what the kernel, the Jupyter kernel allows me to do, uh, which I installed that plugin, uh, hydrogen. Um, allows me to run these and you'll, you'll see that as we go along here. Um, so this UFO uh, report essentially is what we're going to be using to start here and we can just read this file in. Um, notice again that's loading there and boom we have the UFO reports table and we can kind of see what that looks like. Um, just some, some basic information about US, UFO sightings nothing too too fancy again i'm using the same data sets and tables and everything that i learned in the uh, the videos um, so you can feel free to go and watch those videos um, if you're interested in following me on my journey or you can just listen to my um, summary of the things i've learned um, so first thing that i'm I, uh, i'm going to share with you is we want to know what values in the table are null and what values are not null. And this is a simple function, uh, a method uh, that allows us to do that. And we can see true and false values for if it's null or not. Um, we can also use this drop in a uh, method, which allows us to drop. In this case, if there are any values in a particular row, then we're going uh, that are null, then we're going to drop that particular row. And we can change that any to all, and it will uh, only drop it if all of them are null, and you can, you can actually uh, specify more specifics in that method. Um, then we learned about filling the null values with uh, a particular value. And, and this is an example of that. We're just filling anywhere we have the null value with a various value. Um, and you can see that right there, 18 to 38 has been filled with various. Um, we can also select specific columns. So if I wanted to see, hey, um, what is the colors reported column? I can grab that and I get back what's called a pandas series which is essentially just one column going all the way down. Um, I can see what is the shape of my pandas data frame, which again is just the table. The data frame is the table. Um, this particular one is uh, just over 18,000 by five. So five columns over 18,000 rows. Um, and then I can see, well, what are the columns well, I've got the city, colors reported, shapes reported, state, and time columns. Um, then I can also choose to drop specific rows. So if I drop 0, 1, 2, 3, then I'm just dropping the first four rows of my uh, data frame here. And uh, the axis 0 indicates I want to drop rows, not columns. Um, and so you'll notice again that I start on four instead of uh, a zero. Um, but you'll also notice that if I just take get the beginning, the head of this table, that those values are still in there. So it actually didn't change the table itself. And I'll explain that in just a second here. Um, so now if I drop colors reported axis one, so this would be the columns, um, I'm actually getting, going to run this. Uh, this actually runs with this uh, parameter called in place, and I've set that to true. And what that does actually uh, is it takes the actual table itself, 
and applies whatever I, I, I just did, whatever method I ran, and changes the original table. That's what the in place parameter does. So you'll notice I no longer have the colors reported uh, column there because I told it in place is equal to true. Um, next, we're going to read in a, a table. Um, and we can read in tables or CSV uh, files and all sorts of different things with pandas. Um, but I'm going to specifically specify uh, that the delimiter or what separates the values by row is a comma. Um, so essentially, I'm reading a CSV file in, but I'm reading it with a different method or a different function called uh, read table instead of read, read CSV. There's not very a big of a difference there. But um, so we now have this new data table uh, called drinks. And um, it's just a, a drinks by country, how much each country drinks of different things. We can do some aggregation. Um, and in this particular thing, we're gonna, we're gonna aggregate by continent. We wanna know what's the mean of the beer servings, okay? So that's what we're grabbing there. And we can even aggregate uh, specific things across the continent. So in this case, I'm, I'm, I'm aggregating by continent, but I wanted to know the count, the min, the max, and the mean. Um, and that's a really cool way of just grabbing values that you care about, you know, looking at data uh, from a pretty overview level. And then another really cool thing I can do is I can actually plot the data. Um, and Pandas is really good about making visualizations happen uh, very simply. I don't have to do a whole lot to make this happen. If I wasn't running in a kernel, I actually would have to run uh, a show command um, in order to show the plot. But because it's inside of, uh, it's running in my, my program here, uh, I don't have to actually run that. Next, we're just going to grab another data set for movies. Um, and I'm going to show you the, the, the location or lock um, method. And this is going to allow us to grab specific things that we want to look at. So if I want to filter um, movies in this, that we have movies by dur and duration, genre, and ratings, and things of that nature. If I want to look at the movies uh, that have a time that's greater than or equal to 200 minutes, then I can do that. So it's my rows. How am I filtering my rows? How am I filtering my, my columns? So I'm getting, again, this is getting uh, movies with a duration of 200 minutes or more. And I want just the genre column. Um, and I can filter by multiple conditions if I want. Uh, this particular one, again, movies greater than or equal to 200 minutes. And I want to know if their genre is a drama. But then I'm getting... You'll notice there's a comma there. That's getting then all of the columns. And boom, all the columns, movies, 200 minutes or more, genre, drama. Um, very cool stuff. I can get value counts. Um, this normalized parameter just essentially gives me percentages of the total, which is really useful. Um, I can get unique. Uh, genres. I can display how many unique genres we have or any uh, particular category. Um, this one I think is really fascinating. I can actually get across what's called a cross tab, um, which essentially gives me a count across these two different uh, columns. So actions that are approved, actions that are G, etc. And I get a count of all of those things, which I think is really fascinating. I can also do a histogram plot. Again, this is really just basic, but uh, very powerful tools here. I can do a, a bar plot, um, describe the data, so any, any numerical columns. It'll give me just kind of an overarching summary of those, those columns. Um, then I can actually change. So you'll notice that uh, in the data frame, 
that typically we see numbers like zero through some, you know, the end of the, uh, the number of rows. Well, I could actually change that index to be the title of a movie or whatever other column I want, uh, which could be really useful. Um, I can actually then go and grab by the, this index, um, which is a very, again, a very useful tool. Um, then I was able to learn about, again, kind of filtering the data and being able to use this loc method. But then there's also this iloc method. Um, this iloc method allows us to uh, essentially do the same thing as loc, except we're doing it with numbers. So I want columns zero and three, or I want columns, you know, one and two or whatever. Um, and there's some subtle differences between lock and I lock that I learned about that were, that were pretty fascinating. Um, another thing that I learned about was um, being able to save uh, da these data sets into CSV files it's using the to CSV or to what's called a pickle. Um, and a pickle is essentially a data frame that we can save to memory. Um, it's kind of a funny thing, you know, pandas and pickles, right? Um, very exciting stuff. Anyways, um, then another thing, I'm gonna go ahead and create another data frame here. Essentially, it's just gonna have an ID and then a quality. Boom, just like that. And if I were to sort, it's going to do that alphabetically, which I don't want that. So we can create um, categorical D types, essentially. Uh, so we're setting these categories up to be ordered in a certain way. So I can say, well, I want it to be good, very good, excellent. And then if I sort that, you can see good, good, very good, excellent, exactly the way that I would hope that it would be uh, sorted. And you'll notice down there it says good, very good, and then the best is excellent. Um, and then I can even use that. Um, we did briefly talk about logistic regression um, using a, a training set from a website called Kaggle uh, about Titanic data. And I'm not going to get super into that. I think I'll cover that more later. But uh, we did learn how to sample from uh, data sets and, and this random state parameter allows us to uh, reproduce our results. So I, if I, as long as I have this random state equals the same number, it's always going to grab the same samples. Um, if I took that away, it would be random every time. And then the last thing that I want to share about what I learned here, um, again, diving into some more modeling tools, uh, is, is creating dummy variables. Um, so for instance, if I wanted to have a, a variable for each specific um, type of something, so sex, I wanted a variable, yes or no, we're male, yes or no, we're female, so zero or one, then I can do that. And so what I'm gonna do here in this get dummies is I'm actually going to take this Titanic data, I'm telling it, I want you to grab the columns sex and embarked, and I want you to treat those uh, essentially as, as categories and create individual columns for each of the types. Um, and you'll see that happen here. Sex male is either a zero or a one. If it's a one, it's male. If it's zero, it's female. The embarked had three different uh, parameters there. And so it's broken into two sections, zero, zero being that third section that you're not seeing there. Thanks so much again for joining me on my journey. Uh, this has been a successful week too. Um, I'm excited to continue the journey. It'll be more pandas next week. Um, and maybe we'll get past pandas and, and into some other things. Who knows? But um, if you like the video, leave a like, subscribe, do the things that YouTube tells you to do. We'll see you guys next time.